morning. I'm looking for a nice stone to flip on the water. <clears throat> a typical boy's effort. There's hardly a wisp of cloud in the sky after the storm we just had. I wonder if the architects realized the implications down the road of this design, the beauty of it, that it would have at sunrise and the people from all over the world could see the sun rising in that window. It's amazing the bounty that comes from a good deed. This is why I want a stone to flip on the water and I can't find one. It has to be flatter than deeper, otherwise it won't. It will just sink. Maybe all the boys who have passed through here have flipped all the stones that were good for that. If I go down closer to the water, there's less chance because there are less stones down there. Lots of shelves, but not stones. I wonder if you know why I want to get the stone to flip on the water. Why I want to do that little metaphor today. How many times can you flip the stone on the water? I guess if I don't get the ideal one, I have to settle for whatever I get. <coughs> <clears throat> Maybe you can help me. <clears throat> They're all deeper than wider. There's one here. Oh, you see, it's deeper at the end. That's not going to flip very well. <clears throat> And there are so many stones. This one is a bit deep, but it's it's actually it has a feel to it that it might work. It's a bit risky going down with just one because <clears throat> if I goof it with the first one, then I'd be without it for the second one. But if I don't find another one as we walk along here, I'll just try with this one and hope for the best. <clears throat> So let's go for it with this one. Okay, so you have to count how many times it bounces. Now let's hope that it does bounce. Five. So it made five bounces. Well, you see, today, if God bounced stone on the water, he set up Abraham. And Abraham shows up centuries later in the psalm, Psalm 105, which is a very impressive psalm because just like also 106, it actually is... Um, quack, 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 quack. The little chicks are coming to me and the parents are late on the job, so they have to come along as well. Quack, 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 quack. This would be a good one to get the sun in the picture with them. Quack, 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 quack. You okay, you okay? I'm not going to hurt you guys. It's, it's okay, it's okay. Any 
Egyptian geese. You see, there's another, another theme, Egypt. So actually, <clears throat> there's a very interesting uh, second connection as well. So we have Abraham showing up in the first reading of Genesis and in the Psalm 105 and in the Gospel. <clears throat> But there's also another bouncing going on there. Let's see if you'll pick it up as we go forward. So there's a mighty promise made to Abraham. And it's amazing how a simple nomad shepherd going along the hills of Mesopotamia. This is Mount Arbel, people. We didn't move to Mesopotamia. And he's going with his herds, looking for grazing. It wasn't always green like that. It can be very arid. And he is on his path to a new promised land that God will show him. And little does he realize that his reality will also show up in a debate 2,000 years later at the temple in Jerusalem. That's a big deal. And so Jesus is, is uh, in this very intense discussion. It's not just conflict, people. It's filled with revelation. Like yesterday's line, if you stay in my, if you abide by my word, in my word, you will be free. You will remain the truth, and the truth will set you free. An amazing claim. We talked a little bit about this at Mass last night. You can find it also just the homily podcast in Magdala. I think it's on the YouTube channel or maybe in the Facebook as well. And the links for it. And then you have uh, the recording of the Mass as well. If you just jump in a little bit, you get the homily. But the truth, the truth will set us free. And the importance of truth and the relationship with God, how it opens up a great freedom in the human being. The human being becomes capable of freedom the more we're anchored in God. And the deeper spouses love each other, the greater uh, freedom they have in the world because they're such a support to each other. What really takes away our freedom is our selfishness, our lack of love, our lack of fidelity and we become imprisoned, but we never lose our freedom completely, you know? Well, that's the theme from yesterday a little bit more. And today we have another part of this amazing revelation. And let's go to the text. That's probably the best thing to do right now, just so we get it all in a good spot. in these very intense debates. Well, the phone isn't bringing it up here. <clears throat> the key line is when, well, Jesus promises that if we stay in his word, we will have, we will not taste death. We will not know death. Now, it's good enough that he tells us it's going to be free, that we're going to be free in his word, but that we won't know death. So this is very hard for the people to accept straight off. And then the next thing is, <clears throat> uh, you know, obviously Abraham, that's so celebrated also in Psalm 105, he is... Um, <coughs> He is the measure of great faith. And so they say, well, Abraham died. 
So how can you say those who keep your words are not going to taste death? And Jesus has now set up for a very, very big statement, and they don't, they don't, uh, they don't uh, miss it. They get it, and it's problematic for them. Before Abraham was, I am. And now we have a second stone throw rolling through scriptures because we have the word I am, and that's coming from Egypt, like our geese and it's Sinai, I am, Moses inquiring into the name of God. So by saying before Abraham was, I am, there's a huge double strike here, a double statement, a double a, a connection of two major, major foundational moments of the chosen people. The promise to Abraham and that his generations after him would follow and benefit from and be blessed by and the revelation of God himself to Moses for the people. As Moses said, I have to go back to the people with all of this. Who should I say sent me? say a biblical perspective really one of the most important features of the entire scriptures that say we go with the Old Testament is not just so much the history of a people but it's the revelation of God to a concrete people in time and place so therefore it becomes their history but it's the revelation of God and from a Christian perspective the entire scriptures with the New Testament then flowering from the old is a revelation about the person of Christ and that's obviously the major uh, separation point for Jewish faith and Christian faith because we believe just as God spoke his word to the people for some atheists and agnostics and rationalists and that's an impossible thought, Deus. And then for the Jewish people that God would become flesh in general wasn't accepted, although many Jewish people did. And that's how we have the New Testament because they understood that. They, that's how they experienced it. That was the gift of faith they received. And they processed that. And that's the New Testament in the beginning of the church. The church has already begun. The New Testament came as almost like a byproduct of it. An expression of what they were living in the community of faith in Jesus. And the revelation of Jesus. And then all of the theology afterwards had to process that and work it out. And try to explain all these incredible statements. And now we're 2,000 years later. And we're coming to the pivotal moment next week of celebration, liturgical celebration, because our faith is not just a pondering of ideas. It's actually being accompanied by God. I am who I am is also I am who I am with you. I accompany you. I accompany my people. I am with my people. And in the Christian understanding, that's very clearly then through Jesus. In the maximum accompaniment of the incarnation and his continual accompaniment through the church. And then we have the importance of very big figures throughout the church history. Figures that stand out very clearly as saints, as theologians, as teachers. And they help us to grasp and formulate and understand and penetrate these great revelations. more and more and yet all the little ones like you and me we also have our spot and our role because Abraham also had parents that helped to form him 
and Isaac and Jacob had important roles, but not quite as important as Abraham. And in other generations, we don't even remember their names. But then the Moses came, part of the same people. And that's God's call to bless each one in their own way. But each of us also have to wrestle with these mysteries. Each, one's, each one of us, is, God wants us to be blessed by these mysteries. To have our path illuminated, to have a sunrise every day when we read the scriptures and we have a new breath of life a new gift of inspiration for our day as we come in contact with these wonderful mysteries of eternal life. God bless you. I'm still a bit covered up because I'm on the mend. God bless you. See you later, alligators. <laughs>